You are listening to the Jewel City Podcast. You can join us in person Sundays at 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. We have something for all people and all ages. Or join our live stream at 10 a.m. In this podcast, we'll hear a message from Pastor Robert. I want to get right into this. We have a lot going on this morning. We'll be honoring our military veterans here shortly. And uh, so I, I want to get right into this, but a couple things that I, I need to say uh, is it's good to be back with you. I appreciate the couple weeks off. And uh, I want to say I highly uh, missed everybody, uh, but it's good to get away, but it's even better to get back. And my wife said at joy class on Tuesday, Pastor Aaron asked if anyone had anything to say that they were thankful for. And my wife spoke up and said, I'm thankful for the staff at Jewel City Church that we can go away on vacation and my husband can relax and not one time worry about anything that's going on here. And I can't always uh, remember that that was the case, but I thank God for every staff member and Pastor Eric did a tremendous job. Pastor Aaron did a tremendous job and the youth band, I was watching by live stream as we drove home from Florida. Any church in America would love to have our youth band every Sunday morning. So I thank them all and I appreciate them. Amen. I know I'm all geared up here today and I just had you sit down, but if you're able out of reverence for the reading of the word of God, I want you to please stand with me. I've been working on this message for a while and uh, when I was younger, I didn't want anyone to tell me anything. Anybody in the house, did you always know it all? And then the older I get, I find out I, I want to learn. And you should be able to learn from each person that you come across, even a beggar. You should be able to learn something in every area of your life. And today I pray that we could learn from biblical trees. Now I'm not a tree hugger. Don't get, don't get me wrong here. Um, so I guess well, I probably shouldn't even have said that, but I did. <laughs> So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's back. <laughs> Luke 19, 1 and 10. I'll get a letter this week probably from a tree hugger. That's all right. I'll hunt him down and hug him. <laughs> look at your neighbor again and say, neighbor, he needs to just move on. Let's look at Luke 19, chapter 1 through excuse me, 19 verse one through verse 10. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief, someone say chief, among the publicans and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press because he was little of stature. A very small man, very large crowd. This very small man had to be insecure because of his size. How humiliated he must have been to had to press through the crowd and he still couldn't see Jesus, but he still humbled himself to climb a tree. When he climbed that tree, he was positioned to see Jesus. You are positioned here this morning to see Jesus. And he ran before and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him and he said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. Today, Zacchaeus, come down and make haste. Don't put it off to tomorrow. You're positioned here this morning to see the Lord. The Bible said, today is the day of salvation. Come with haste. And he made haste and he came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, all the religious elite they all murmured saying, Jesus is going to be the guest with a man 
that is a sinner. Can you imagine Jesus going to be with a sinner? Hello, what'd he come for? To seek and to save the sinners. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor, you're a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, man, I, you need to get this. Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by, foul, by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Pastor Aaron, give Miss Mary the microphone, please. Oh God, hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank you this morning for what's been accomplished here in this service already, that we were entered into your courts with praise and thanksgiving. But God, today, as we come before you, Lord, maybe not where we all should be, mm. but God, we're still striving to get to that place. And I mm -hmm. thank you today that you came to seek and to save that which was lost. I thank you today that one day you sought me out and you washed me in your precious blood. I thank you for that today. I ask you this morning, Lord, that you move in and out every pew walk up and down the aisles, minister to those, God, that needs to be ministered to today as we reach out to you, as the song says, touching Jesus. That's all that really matters today. And we ask you today that you would bless. I pray for our pastor this morning. I pray, God, for a fresh anointing. Mm. I pray, God, as the words comes forth, God, that it will lodge deep within our spirit. God, that we may grow in you today. Father, we just give you glory, praise, and honor, for it's in the name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The sycamore tree. Zacchaeus climbed a sycamore tree. The sycamore tree is seen as the tree of salvation. And I believe that Zacchaeus uh, was saved here amongst these verses. Because if you look at verse nine, Jesus said, this day is salvation come to this house. When a person comes to know Christ, it gets that person into heaven. But heaven ought to get into you when you come to know Christ. Do you hear me? I wanna say that again. When a person comes to know Christ, uh, it not only gets him into heaven, but it also uh, ought to get heaven into you. So I ask you this morning, is heaven in your life? So here we find Zacchaeus testified. In verse eight, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. So what I see in this text this morning is conversion, repentance, and restitution. Zacchaeus was a crooked tax collector. It's amazing to me that when a person is saved, God puts your past behind you. It's amazing. I was in a place this week where I run into a lady a few years older than me and she brought up my past, as she always does. And, and I love her anyhow, and she doesn't mean anything by it, but I was doing something one time during graduation in high school and ended up at her house at a party, long story short, and I said to her, I said, boy, you'll never forget that, will you? And she said, no, I won't. She said, I believe the Lord has kept that in my mind uh, that I could bring it to your attention and keep you humble that you won't get too big for your britches. And I said, I appreciate that. 
But I'm just amazed that when a person comes to know God and he gets saved, how God will take your past and put it where it belongs behind you. That's why they call it your past. Anybody in the room thankful that your past is not in front of you, but it is behind you. Somebody give God a hand clap and a shout of praise. You say, well, I don't have a past. Uh, Well, right now you're lying. So there's a sin going on in your life. Uh, I'm looking at a room full of people that have lied. Do you hear what I'm saying? You say, well, I can't believe you're talking like this. You're at the church. I know exactly where I'm at. I'm looking at a bunch of people that's not only lied. There's a lot of people that has cheated. Can you hear what I'm saying? Well, pastor, you would call us cheaters. Well, hold on to your seat because there's some in the house uh, that's adult. Uh, do you hear? Not only by sleeping with somebody else, but if you look at somebody and lust, the Bible said that you were an adulteress. Uh, I'm looking at people that steal. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's some crooks in the house. Uh, I'm looking at some that's got bitterness and on and on and on. But thank God for the blood that we sang about. Without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. Somebody give God a hand clap and a shout of praise. Lying, cheating, adulterous, stealing, bitterness. Hebrews 8 and 12, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. God can't remember my past, but that woman can. (laughs) Everyone knew (laughs) She watches on TV, I'm in trouble, I know, but I love her. Everyone knew Zacchaeus was a crook. Everybody knew Zacchaeus was a sinner. But here's the point, Zacchaeus knew he was a sinner. You know yourself better than anybody else, my goodness. Romans 10 and nine, you say, if I'm a sinner, what do I do? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Ho, that's good stuff right there. Do you hear me? True conversion leads to repentance. I don't believe everybody that lifts their hand on an invitation is truly saved. Because true conversion will lead to repentance. Verse eight, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. Conversion brings conviction. God help me. Conviction brings repentance. So listen to what true repentance in 2 Corinthians 7, 9 through 11. Now I rejoice. It's kind of long, but listen to me. Now I rejoice not that ye were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance. For you were made sorry after a godly manner that you might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance, godly sorrow, not sorry because I got caught. Sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold this selfsame thing that you sorrow after a godly sort what carefulness it brought in you, what cleaning of yourselves, yet what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things, you have approved yourself to be clear in this matter. Sorry because you sinned and not because you got caught. There is a difference. Repentance is an outcome of sorrow. Sorrow leads to repentance. Repentance leads to a changed life. 
If you raise your hand for salvation and there's not evidence by a changed life, you might want to come to Jesus again because it will change your life. It will change your vocabulary. It will change what you drink, what you listen to and what you say. Peter says in Acts chapter three, verse 19, repent ye therefore and be converted. So here's the order, sorrow, repentance, and a changed life. A changed life means to turn away from sin and turn toward God. Can somebody give God a hand clap and a shout of praise? The sycamore tree of salvation is interesting. In verse eight he says, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I, he said I, Jimmy, restore him fourfold. The tree of salvation. What is your tree? What is your sycamore tree? What is the sycamore tree you was in when you seen Jesus? Mine was a sycamore tree of a broken heart because my grandfather was laying on his deathbed and I was sitting in a bar drinking. That's where my sycamore tree was from a broken heart knowing that a man that I loved was getting ready to leave this world. That's what brought me. What brought Zacchaeus? What brought Zacchaeus was a sycamore tree of curiosity. Zacchaeus had heard about Jesus, couldn't stand it any longer. What brought you today? Was it a baby dedication? If that's what brought you, that's good. But get in your tree and see something beyond the baby and get a hold of Jesus and the baby will turn out all right. Go ahead, give God a hand clap. Curiosity. He heard about blind people being touched by the Lord and now their eyes were opened. He'd heard about the lame laying around begging for money. And Jesus passed by I'm sure he heard about a dead man where Jesus spoke and he came back alive. Well, you say that's just a cute little Bible story that we teach our children. No, it's not just a cute little Bible story. It is the absolute truth, the word of God. And you can look back and think that it was just a Bible story, but why don't you look around the room and see the same thing here today. Those that were alcoholics in this house that have been touched by the blood of Jesus and the old fountain dried up and the new fountain is still flowing. Why don't you look down the aisle, maybe where you're sitting or the seats in front of you and see the adulterous man or the adulterous woman that slept around and slept around and slept around, but they got in their tree and they seen Jesus and now they are men and women of virtue, of valor, and of God. What God did for them in the old day, God can do for you today. Somebody give God a hand clap and a shout of praise. How about looking down the aisle? Dopeheads. That's what we called them back in my day. Dopeheads. But Jesus touched them. Now they get high on Jesus. Huh? It's not just a story. When Jesus passes by and he touches you, it'll change. Your crack pipe, your coke, your marijuana will be gone. Do you hear me? It'll be in the past. If you're still sniffing and toting, brother, you ought to come to the well again and get under the spout where their glory comes out. Give him a hand clap and a shout of praise. You're right, Joey. He told me on the phone, he said, I love it when you jerk that jacket off. I'll tell you why I'm jerking it off. It ain't, I like hiding this real estate, but it's hot. So why don't you look around you and see the footprints of Jesus on the hearts of the people that sat beside of you today. 
Is there anyone in this place that's not ashamed that you can testify by standing your hand and say, I was in one of those categories today, but Jesus passed by and touched me and I've never been the same again. Look around the room. What he did for them, he'll do for you. Do you hear me? Someone go ahead and give God a hand clap and a shout of praise if he touched you, if he cleaned you up, if he set your feet upon a rock. Hallelujah. Zacchaeus came out of curiosity. Listen, let me tell you what happens in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man was in Christ, the new creature has come and the old is gone and the new is here. I'm not the same that I used to be. Not the same. I didn't say I was perfect, but I am not the same. The problem with a sycamore tree, somebody say, what's the problem? I'm glad you asked. Most people fall in love with the sycamore tree and they never move from it. Most people get saved, sit down like it's a shade tree and they never move. Don't have no desire, they just wanna escape hell. The sycamore tree is to help you get started, it's not designed to be a shade tree, a resting place. You see, the Bible states that as Zacchaeus looked down from the tree, he began to fall under conviction. I remember when I left that bar that night and went to Enterprise just to sit in the parking lot, had no idea they were in revival, and the place was packed and I slipped in the back door and instantly I fell under conviction. I didn't hold my hand, half mass, nothing wrong with that. But I got up. And I walked down front in front of everybody and I knelt down under conviction of the Holy Ghost and I was saved that night and I didn't, know, didn't need no connect card to tell me I got saved. Sycamore trees to help you, but it's not for you to stay. This was the first time in Zacchaeus' life, I believe that he viewed sin as God sees it. Uh-oh. When we view God of sin, our sin as God sees it, it'll make you sick. You can hide it from me and you can hide it from your spouse. You can get up in the middle of the night and get on your iPad or on your computer to the filth of the world. But when you realize that God is looking down at you and you realize how it disturbs God, the God that sent his son Jesus to die on a cross, that we can live a life of abundance and free from the sin of this world, that it makes God Almighty sick, it'll turn your stomach. Boy, this is old school, ain't it? Huh? When you pop that top, when you roll that joint, when you lie to your pastor, when I call and I say, honey, is your mom home? Tell him he's, I'm not home. <laughs> My dad was an insurance man for 40 years. He went to Hester Cox's house. Lived on Saltwell. Anybody know who I'm talking about? I figured so. The old screen door was there on the, about half the screen was gone, the little girl come and dad was there to collect the insurance and dad said, is Hester home? Is your mommy here? She said, no, my mommy's not home. My dad said, I don't even know what made me say it. I said, Hester, get up from behind that couch. <laughs> Hi, Bob. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't act like you don't lie. Some of you love lying about your taxes. That's a whole nother message. So Zacchaeus is in a tree and he looks down under conviction and he begins to view his sin as God sees it. He could no longer stay the crooked businessman that he had always been. Boy, there's a message right there. He had to restore himself. So why don't we let us all see our sins as God sees them? As a pastor of this church, it is my responsibility, and I've thought a lot about this, I walked a lot while we were on vacation, it is my responsibility and also the board members of, the, uh, of this church, our responsibility to treat the staff that works here, the paid staff and the volunteer, but I'm talking now about the paid staff, to the best of our ability. And as the finances grow, their finances, blessings should grow. 
I don't ever want to take something from somebody to make my life better. So if you're a business person here and God has blessed you beyond measure and all you want to do is get somebody to work for you that you can prosper more and not bless them, you're a crook. Hmm, boy, you're a crook. That's a truth. And I'm going to preach it. That's a truth. If God has blessed you and he's put men and women in your life to help you run your business and you try to cut every corner to bless them, you are a crook in the eyes of God. Oh boy. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he needs to go to the next tree. (laughs) The juniper tree, somebody say the juniper tree. So we call it the juniper tree of despair. So I wanna look at Elijah, 1 Kings 19 and four. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough now, Lord, take away my life for I am not better than my father's. Here was a prophet, a mighty man of God sitting under a juniper tree who is moaning, poor me, just kill me. What we have here is the escape of Elijah from Jezebel. Being saved, what we have is an example of being saved by the living God from disappointment, discouragement, and despair. At one time or another, every human being faces disappointment. Most of us have experienced discouragement, but less of us have ever experienced what we would call true despair. It's where you come to a place in your life that you are hopeless. Hopeless. You have a loss of heart. You feel like there's no way out. It leads to depression, and then sometimes it leads to suicide, which nobody wants to talk about. Later in the service, we'll be honoring our veterans, rightfully so. I was looking and reading in an article yesterday about our veterans, and for the last six years, just six years that I looked at, 17 on an average veterans a day in America commit suicide. 17 a day. Here we have one of the strongest men of God to ever serve, Elijah, which is gripped by a spirit of discouragement and despair. Have you ever been in that tree? Maybe you're in that tree of discouragement today in that tree of despair. So I want you to pay attention to me here. Why, I think I'm getting shot. Why was, (laughs) it just comes out, I can't help it. Why was it that Elijah was in such despair? Well, he's fearful of Jezebel, but here's the real reason. Elijah had been ministering, you need to hear me, and pouring his life into the lives of others to the place that he had drained himself with no spiritual resources for himself. This can happen to a pastor. It can happen to a music pastor. It can happen to an assistant pastor, a, 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 a teacher, a, a pastor of visitation, a pew set. You can get to the place where all you're doing is religious stuff instead of God stuff alone and get to a place where you have no spiritual resource to draw from. Have you ever been under the juniper tree of despair for whatever reason? Here's our answer. Quit looking at the circumstances and focus on God. Maybe you're here today and you're discouraged. Maybe you're in despair. I pray 
And I prayed and I prayed as I've worked on this message and I mean that. I came here yesterday and I sought God and I asked God to touch people today that's discouraged and that's in despair. First Kings 19 and five, and as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, arise and eat. So if you came here today, I would encourage you to arise, get up from that sleep, get up from underneath that juniper tree and eat manna from God. God's word will bring you out of despair and discouragement. God will revive you. God will re-nourish you. Give God a hand clap and a shout of praise. <laughs> Joshua 1 and 9. Have I not commanded thee be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Psalms 147 and three, he healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. I don't know if your heart is broken and I don't know why, but I'm telling you, there is a God that cares about you and a God that will heal you and put your heart back together again, better and stronger than it ever was before. If you believe it, go ahead and give him a hand clap. I ain't finished with that tree yet. Proverbs 17 and 22, a merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. The Bible said we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with him. Let me tell you, after the election this week, I was discouraged. Now, you may not like me talking about it, but I'm talking about it anyhow. I was discouraged because America is in despair. And I had my hope in a red wave. That's just me, whether you like it or you don't. But the Lord realized to me, brought to my attention, that the red wave came a long time ago on a cross called Calvary. And I'm not going to focus on the politics. I'm going to focus on the Lamb of God that was slain. It's his blood and America needs Jesus. We don't need the right, we don't need the left, we don't need the White House, we don't need the outhouse. We need the Lamb of God. So, somebody rejoice, act like you love Jesus. Come on, stand up, put your hands together. Say, God, I trust in you. Some trust in chance, some trust in horses, but I will trust in the Lord. How? Oh. 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 How? Woo, sit. Sit down. Gotta move, gotta move, gotta move. The mulberry tree. Let's, let's move over to the mulberry tree. It's the mulberry tree of awareness. Some of us have no awareness. In 2 Samuel chapter five, we can see where God is talking about another tree. In verse 24, and let it be, when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestir thyself for then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. So what's going on? David and his men were headed into their second battle against the Philistine army. And David sought the face of the Lord for guidance. And he advised, he advised David, don't make a move. David, don't make a move until I give you the word. David, you just stand right there in the midst of everything that's going on. He said, David, when you hear the sound of the mulberry trees. So there's David and his army, they're resting. And all of a sudden there was a noise in the mulberry trees. 
And David declared, oh my, he said, men, that's my sign. That's my sign from God. I'm referring to the mulberry tree of awareness. The leaves begin to rumble in the trees and it was a sign unto David. Can I tell you, in the midst of your battle, don't move. No matter how much fear that you may have, in the midst of making a decision on a home to buy, or a car, or a child's education, don't move. I've been guilty of moving without hearing the wrestling of the leaves in the trees. But every time that I stood still and waited on the Lord, I, all of a sudden, I'd get my sign. My sign usually comes in the middle of the night. And when God gives me, I said, devil, uh, you can't stop me because I've got confirmation. I've got a sign from God. Some of you jump out of one marriage, jump in another one, jump in another one. Just keep jumping one financial wreck after another one. Stand still and pray and say, God, I ain't moving until you give me a sign. Give him a hand clap and a shout of praise. I'm referring, thank you. I need a bigger towel than that. <laughs> David declared that's my sign. David knew the awareness, what am I saying? David knew the awareness of the presence of God. Man, I used to run ahead of God. I remember Pastor Ruth years ago said, you need to slow down, you're dragging Jesus. <laughs> and sometimes I'm guilty still. But I've learned, God will give you a sign. Is the leaves rustling in your mulberry trees? Are you going through a difficult time with your health or with your finances or with your children? Wait on that sign. I got a couple more trees I wanna talk about, please. I don't like being long, but get over it. <laughs> the fellowship tree, the fellowship tree, and I want you to see this. In Genesis 18, chapter one through four, and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. You gotta get this, verse two. And he lift up his eyes, and he looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them, from the tent door and he bowed himself toward the ground and he said, my Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away. He said, I pray thee from thy servant, let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. We call it the fellowship tree. The Lord appeared to Abraham in order to strengthen their friendship. And God wanted a closer friendship with Abraham. Can I tell you, God wants a closer friendship with each one of you and myself. I want you to note in verse two, and he meaning Abraham, and he looked up so that means Abraham's head was bowed, probably meditating and praying just days or weeks before God had told Abraham that Ishmael would not be the promised seed, that it would come through Sarah. It had to devastate him. So what has devastated you in your life? Courtney, we talked yesterday how you was devastated. And now look at Griffith, what he's doing. God is speaking to us this morning. The point is that meditation and prayer are the way to draw closer to God instead of falling apart at your circumstance. That had to have shook Abraham. But also not only did Abraham pray, but when he looked up, he ran out and he served them. And this is a very strong point. These people came together and they had love and they had joy and they had fellowship there together. And I thought a lot about this this last couple weeks being off. I'm blessed to have a lot of my blood family right here. You're my blood family, raise your hand, raise your hand. 
Maybe I'm not that blessed. <laughs> Where's the rest of my family today? I'll call them after church. Matter of fact, if you're not in a hurry, I'll call them out now. <laughs> but I have a lot of family. But, uh, oh, that caught me off guard. Maybe they're downtown at one of the churches. I don't know. So here's my point after messing that up. Everyone in this room is my family. Everybody in this room is my family. And I mean that. I mean that. This is our, this is our family. The family of God. Don't take each other for granted. I don't take you for granted. I want to serve you. I wouldn't sit under a pastor that had three people carrying his Bible and opening up his doors and opening up his car door and changing his clothes and everything else. You think that's crazy? It's a truth. Some pastors have stretch limos longer than their church. Huh, true. More bodyguards than they got church members. Stupid, stupid. Jesus came to serve. Abraham ran out of the tent and he served. And it's an honor to serve each one of you. Don't take each other for granted. And I'm gonna say this after 29 years. Don't take me for granted. By the crow, if the crow was to fly right now, no more than less than a quarter of a mile from here, most of you came across it to Gypsy Bridge today. The log cabin church right there on the corner, their pastor George had a heart attack Friday. To my understanding, they put a couple stents in, kept him in the hospital was going to put a couple more stints in tomorrow. He went home to be with the Lord yesterday morning. Can I tell you, he's 61. Can I tell you how old your pastor is? He's 61. By God's grace, April 10th of 2021, God touched my heart and spared my life. The person that preaches to you every week, the person that teaches your children, the person that runs the media and the sound and the lights and sings to you may not be here tomorrow. And that's your family. Stand with me. Oh my goodness, I got two more trees. Anybody got a chainsaw? We'll cut one of them out. <laughs> I have spent more hours on this message than I have any message, and I'm not going to cheat it. And shame on you if you leave, <laughs> unless you got to go to work. The willow tree of a lost joy. Psalms 137 and 1, by the rivers of Babylon. There we sat down. What a mistake. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Listen to verse 2. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. David was talking here about Israel. He was talking about the day they hung their harp in the willow trees and they gave up. Don't give up, don't give up. They lost their joy. They put their harps up, they quit singing. Don't lose your song, don't lose your song, don't lose your whistle, and don't sit down. I'm gonna move on to the last one and leave a lot of that out. And this is unbelievable, and I had to write a lot of things down from the commentary that I can't remember, so bear with me. The life tree, the life tree. There is a tree of life. There is. Revelation 22 and two, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there a tree of life which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There is a tree of life in the city that we'll spend eternity in. But I want you to remember the tree of life was also planted in the Garden of Eden. And you can read that in Genesis chapter two, verse nine. In the garden, as long as a man remained sinless, he was allowed to eat of that tree. The fruit was the nourishment of life and it infused eternal life into Adam's body. It symbolized the perfect and life-giving environment God had given Adam. The tree of life is now in the heavenly Jerusalem. Two things are said about it here in Revelation 22 and 2. The tree of life 
bears 12 crops of fruit, one crop each month. What does this mean? It symbolizes continuous life that we will live forever, forever. The second thing it speaks about in Revelation 22 and two, the leaves of the tree of life are for the healing of the nations and they provide a perfect life. The leaves prevent sickness and disease. They give the person who eats them a perfect body. This symbolizes the perfection that Jesus Christ gives the perfect healing and deliverance from all suffering. That tree of life is a tree that I've never seen yet. But I know, Pastor Rita, that I will. I will see that tree. Are you part of the tree of life? Are you a part of that tree of life today? If not, I would encourage you to humble yourself like Zacchaeus did and press to the crowd. Revelation 22 and seven, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. To overcome, to be an overcomer, is to overcome, is to be victorious by believing, by persevering, and remaining faithful. Such living a life like that will bring great rewards in your life and for the life to come. Every head bowed and every eye closed. How about my prayer, our prayer team coming forward? As everyone is standing with your head down, I've not seen that life or that tree, my friend, but I will. And my prayer today is that you'll be standing beside that tree, the tree of life. Right where you're at this morning, nobody looking around. Is your name in the Lamb's Book of Life? Is your heart right with God? Are you ready to meet your maker? Heaven won't be the same without you. God loves you. I'm not gonna to come to you, I'm not gonna single you out, but if you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, I wanna humble myself this morning and lift my hand toward heaven and I'm sorry for my sins and ask God to cleanse you, would you raise your hand right now? Would you raise your hand? Don't be ashamed, I see that hand clear in the back. Somebody else, I see your hand, sir. Somebody else. Somebody else, somebody else, somebody else, somebody else. I wanna wait a minute. Is there somebody else? I have friends here today and I don't even know your heart. Some of you I've known for a long time and I'm gonna put you on the spot and I'm gonna ask you personally, you know who I'm talking to in this place. I don't want to go to heaven without you. But friend, I'm going to. But I would rather you go with me. If you'd like to ask Jesus into your life and into your heart and forgive you of your sins, he'll put your sins behind you and never remember them again. Would you slip your hand and say, today, is there another? Today, I want to give my life to Christ. Is there another? Well, I can't drag you through the gate. So I pray that this word would continue to touch your hearts. So those that raise your hands this morning, would you pray this prayer with me and mean it from the bottom of your heart? Lord Jesus, I humbly come before you and I'm sorry. Lord, I'm truly sorry for my sins. And today I ask you to forgive me of my sins. My friend, if you prayed that prayer and you was sincere, then you're just as saved as Billy Graham. And I wanna welcome you to the family of God. Hold on before you begin to clap, church. This is not a place to sit down. It's a place to learn and to grow and to become everything that God wants you to become. 
Church, put your hands together and welcome them to the family of God. Thank you for listening to the Jewel City Podcast. You can join us in person Sundays at 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. We have something for all people and all ages. Or join our live stream at 10 a.m. 